morning and welcome. This is Get the Word in Your Face International with Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God be praised. Jesus saved us to live life and to live life in the presence of God. Yes, we are saved unto eternal life and we are going, but the life that Jesus has saved us to has delivered us from the dominion and the habit of sin. When we lived in the world without God, we were depressed, we were angry, we were frustrated, we never we didn't meet we didn't make ends meet, we struggled with ourselves. There was an emptiness in our hearts that we were not full, we were not satisfied. But here comes God into our lives. And the one who created us is not missing anymore. He's there with us because we have acknowledged that he is. We have taken him in. And knowing who created us has cleansed us from unrighteousness, not being right. I have to use words that don't sound religious because... We need to understand that knowing who God is, knowing who he is, not just assuming that we know who he is, but knowing who he is, is our deliverance, is our salvation. You see, in order to truly be saved, well, first of all, we understand that there is one who created all things, seen and not seen, and heard yet not heard. Everything exists because of him. And that's not impossible. I'd rather believe in what's possible than to believe some far off thing that, you know, we just crawled out of the sea and began to grow legs and walk. We went from fish to ape man to ape to man. You know, this, that's crazy to me. And you still have to wonder, well, where did all that get started from? So we just evolved from our own selves. And we created everything. We own, you know, it's a bunch of endless nonsense. Look, at, uh, there is a God. A God who has created all things. And when we acknowledge who he is, when we receive the very word of God, then are we free indeed. We are truly free to live life the way God, our Creator, had intended us to always live. And there's more to life than going to church. Jesus saved us to live life. When we were in the world, I may have said this already, <laughs> when we were in the world, we couldn't help our frustrations because we were outside of our Creator. We couldn't help our depression because we were outside of our Creator. Anything outside of what gives it life dies. That's what happens. If you take a flower and you cut it, eventually it's going to die. If you take a, a fruit off the vine, if you notice when you pick um, when you pick a banana and you separate it from the bunch, it browns a whole lot faster. These, this is what happens. Anything outside of what gives it life, gives it life, it dies. This is why there's the the promise was that anything, <laughs> anything that is outside of God that does not want Him, suffers. It, it suffers death and destruction. Well, you say, well, we're going to die anyway. We're all going to die anyway. Well, yes, but I'd rather, this body will die. Let, let me get it right. This body will die. You're right. This outward body, but the soul that lives inside of you, that part of you that is a, a, alive and aware of where it is, lives for an eternity. Your consciousness will not die. Though you your soul leaves this body, your consciousness, your awareness of where you are is not going to die. And it will be in one of two places. 
it will either be in hell or it's going to be in heaven. It's going to be with God or with Satan. Let's put it like that. I think some people don't want to believe that there is a hell or a heaven. There's two kingdoms. The kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God. And you will be in either one of those. It just depends on who you believe. Who you side with. Who you eat with. God has given us life. The way he said. Through his son. We come we trust that God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, and we come and we say, yes, I believe that you are the son of God and I want to learn from you. I want to eat from your table. I want you to be the head over me, Jesus Christ, because you are the son of God. And I want you to, to help me to live the life that your father has given us to live. I trust you, Father God. I trust you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be ruler over my soul and cause me to know what I've never known before, that peace, that love, that joy that I could never find. Help me, Lord God, to receive these things in my life. And I will give you all the praise and the glory. I will thank you forever in all my days. You see... This body, it will pass away. I, have, I can't tell you that you will live forever until the day of Christ. But I can tell you this, that you'll have a peace that, that never goes. Jesus came to save our lives to live it. And you can live this life in the love and the peace and the joy that God has given us to live it in. And it doesn't mean that you're happy all the time. It doesn't mean that you won't get angry. But it does mean that you'll have a, a guide, someone who will guide you into peace, somebody who will guide you into joy. Who There's something about him that even though you get angry, you're still okay. Even though things around you are happening that you might not like, he's with you and he has never left you. You, you never feel alone. Some people. <laughs> but I can tell you, I never feel alone. I might need somebody's help. And there's no one around that can physically help me at the moment. But I figure that, you know, God will send them. Help is on the way. So I never really feel alone. Because he is always with me, even in my darkest moments, darkest meaning that there are times when we don't understand everything. But this joy, this peace, this comfort is always in my heart because I know that he is who he says he is. I know that he's given me a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of mercy and grace. I can do all things through Christ because he is my strength. I don't lean to my understanding about things anymore. My understanding landed me in nothing but frustration and misery. You know, when I don't understand, you know how it is when you don't understand something. But Jesus came and he gave me life. The life that he gave me. When I say peace, and I use that word a lot, it's because it's the one thing that this world really seeks. It wants rest. Everybody in this world who, even though they fight wars and all this crazy stuff that we do in this life, people just want peace. They want to be satisfied. But God has come and satisfied us through his son, Jesus Christ. We can be satisfied and enjoy life. Now, back to what I was saying. I don't want to put down... People who go to church and don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad, but we go to church because we need to gather with other people who love God, and we hang around people who love God because it, it, I'm telling you, it's awesome. It's just so joyful to hear somebody else talking about the one who made us and created us to live this life, who saved us and delivered us from the habit, from the dominion and the habit of sin. 
the dominion is that that place that land that place where you lived and that's all you did it was take in you know he you you just cussed all the time you talked about people all the time you hated all the time you were constantly in this rebellion always rubbing always friction always something going on you know never any real rest praise the lord because we we want to identify sin as just having having a, a, adultery we want to have sin as just being stealing and we don't even recognize stealing as sin anymore anyway um we want to recognize sin as murder but sin is separating separation from god separation from your creator not acknowledging him in all of your ways sin is truly i mean if if i don't acknowledge him then then I come into these things that would be a detriment to somebody else. I hope you understand me. I'm not saying that adultery isn't sin. It is sin, but it all starts with a thought. And that thought comes because we're separated from the one who created us. That thought comes because we are, we are born in this flesh. We are born into sin. Into a nature that constantly thinks about evil things to do. That always thinks about itself but God has saved us to live life he is God our salvation and he's given us life through Christ you can read John chapter 1 and read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 through 20 21 God has given us everything that we need through him. Read Isaiah chapter 55. He has created us before the foundation of the world and called us to himself. Given us a chance to come into his presence and to be holy, to be clean, to be washed by the blood of the lamb and by his word. He has even given us his Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in all truth. I, I just think it's awesome what the Lord has done for us. We could live life and be satisfied. We could live life and really be a help to one another without it turning into something else. We could live life and forgive each other. God is with us. Do you believe today? Trust in the Lord. Come to him boldly. Don't be afraid. I mean, so what? You won't have your way anymore. <laughs> God will take that, that way that you want to make, the, the, the life that where you've always wanted to have your way and make it right so that those good things that you want would come to be. You know, he's just going to take it and he's going to wash it over with his word and all the bad things are going to come out of it and all the good things are going to remain. And you know, everybody in this world, as far as I'm concerned, is only a turnaround from God. It's only a turnaround from God. All you have to do is turn around and see. He's only going to come in to your life and he's going to purify you. He's going to purify your motives for why you do anything. He's going to wash you and cleanse you and pull out all the bad things, all the evil, dark, sinister things that are hidden in you, all the things that anybody ever did to you that you have held in your heart and agonized with. He's going to take all that hurt and all that pain out of you and restore it with love, restore it with peace. Restore it with joy. Restore it with hope. 
and you'll be glad you did. Jesus Christ came to save my life. He came to save yours too. God be praised forever. In the name of Jesus, this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I just came to you with a word from the Lord, and I pray that he bless you beyond your understanding and beyond anything you could hope for. Forgive my birds, they just like this time of mourning. <laughs> Have a good day.